Hello everyone. In today's video, we are implementing Keras model on our data that we have of diabetes. So you can download uh, download this data from Kaggle. Uh, here is a link. You can download this data from this link here. Just uh, enter this link into your browser, and you will be switched to this website. Here you can find this diabetes.csv file and just download this file into your system. After downloading, just have a look at this code. So here we have a um, Keras model on which we will train our data and then we will predict the value. So here today I am using sequential model and at the back end I am using TensorFlow. So here I am using pandas for uh, accessing our CSV that is diabetes.csv okay and to access this CSV we are using pandas.readcsv so after this uh, read CSV it returns us a data frame so we save it in data set variable here and then we are printing the data set head to check that uh, the CSV we access we access the CSV correctly or not. So after accessing the CSV, we then check that uh, our data is, uh, is there any null value in our data or not. So if there is any null value, then we have to pre-process our data. But as you can see here, they, we don't have any null value. It means our, there is, our data is already pre-processed and now we have to apply our model. Uh, on the data set so before uh, we apply our model on our data set we divide our data set into two two parts the first part contain the features and the second part will contain the label so feature are those columns in our data set uh, on which we will predict the outcome and outcome is our label so here x is uh, defining uh, features and by defining label also I want you to know here you can see the the first column represent that we are selecting all the rows in our data set and the second one it uh, it means that we are selecting uh, column up to 8 so when you mention column 8 it means you are selecting up to 8 8 column is not included in your data set then we will implement a model that is sequential model. So here you can see we import the sequential model up above using keras.model. Then we add layer to our model. So to add layer to your model, we will use dot add, dot add function in model. And uh, the model contains the sequential. Here you can see we have a model variable which, uh, which is assigned to a sequential model here. So to add the layers, you just have to mention model.add and the layer is added to your model. Here we are using dense layer. So in this model we have, we have three, as you can see we have three layers the, and all the three layers are dense layer. Then, then we are, uh, we, we have some parameters in our function. So yeah so we have here we you can see we have some parameters in our function so the first parameter is the number of neuron you want in your layer so in first layer uh, here we have 12 neurons the second layer we have 8 and the third layer we have one neuron uh, then we have to mention the input dimension input dimension means how many input uh, column you have so as you can see we have eight input column so we are defining 8 as our dimension then we have an activation function so the, for first layer we have we are assigning relu activation function then for second we have again relu and the third one is sigma idle function so what activation function is just have a look at this uh, diagram here so as you can see this is our sigma idle function so uh, what, why we use activation function? The main reason behind it is that it normalizes our data. So as you can see, 
whatever the value of y from minus infinite to plus infinite we are getting a normalization value between 0 to 1 so that our model will predict that whether our person is having diabetes or not so here you can see that our y value lies between 0 to 1 and the formula behind this model graph is 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus x so using this formula we will normalize our values so if we have values that are above 1 or below uh, 0 we use this formula to normalize the value and we will get a value between 0 to 1 so this is our sigmoidal function which is uh, which is known as activation function so here we are using uh, sigmoidal function in our last year so this is what activation means here then we will compile our so here we define uh, all the layers of our sequential model and now we will implement uh, we will compile compile our model so to compile it you have to pass the very uh, some uh, parameters and here you to uh, to compile just uh, assign model dot compile so we we here have a, lo a loss of binary uh, uh, cross entropy optimize we are using adam and matrix we are having accuracy as a matrix okay so then after compiling this model you have a mod train model uh, you have a model and now we will uh, train this model using model dot fit so as you can see we are passing some variables here the first one is the x value that is our feature then the second one is the label our outcome value the third one is the epoch, uh, epochs that are basically the iteration we want and this is the batch size so after executing this script you will see that your model start learning by itself so first i first epoch here you can see we are getting a loss of 3.7 and accuracy of 59 so which is uh, not good then in the second iteration you see we are getting a loss of 0.9 and with accuracy of 59 okay then later on when this model keeps on executing and the iteration keeps on going then you can see later on the execution uh, in your model you can as you can see here we have a loss of 0.49 and the accuracy of 75 percent so this model keeps on learning by itself that's why we use neural networks so as you can see on our 150th iteration we are getting a loss of 0.47 and accuracy of 76 then to evaluate your model all you have to do is to uh, is to define model dot evaluate here with the parameters that are features and uh, labels and then just print the score using model dot matrix name one so in the matrix name you have here accuracy so just print it out and you can see we are getting an accuracy of 79.56 which is a very good accuracy and to predict the values you have to use model dot predict predict function here and in this predict function you will send the feature value and then it will return the label of your whether uh, the prediction value that is your outcome so as you can see here we have a prediction value here and we are rounding this value so what we get is we get a value between 0 to 1 then we will round that value so that we either we get 0 and 1 so after round, uh, rounding of this value we will get these values as our prediction so here 1 defines that the person is having diabetes and the 0 defines that a person is not having diabetes so this is all in our, in our model today so this is all in today's tutorial hope you uh, gain some knowledge from this uh, see you in next tutorial thank you